The fourth and the last major rule that we're going to talk about with finding derivatives is called the chain rule. What we're actually going to be using is something called the general power rule, which is a special case of that chain rule. So let's go back to an idea that we've already talked about. Let's say that I had something like 3x to the fourth. The power rule said that if you have x, just that variable x raised to the power of 4, and then you have that constant out front, we said that you would take the exponent and you would multiply it times the constant that's multiplied out front, and then you would reduce the power by 1. So this is the power rule. And now we're going to talk about something called the general power rule. What if what we have that's being raised to the power of 4 what if that's not just x? What if that's actually a whole other function? So let's say that we drop a function where x used to be. So if we raise a function to a power, and we have this constant out front, we're going to use a similar rule. We're going to take the 4, the exponent, we're going to multiply it times the constant that's out front. And remember what we used to do is we left x and we reduced the power on x. Well, now we're going to leave the function and we're going to reduce the power on the function. So we're going to reduce the power to 3. Now, you would think that if we change something that the, the derivative would change, right? If we changed x, replace that with a function, that something would have to change. So we actually are, what we're going to do then is we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. Okay, so this is what we call the chain rule, um, really the general power rule, but we call it the chain rule. So this is what our formula says. If you have basically a group of terms or a function that's raised to a higher power, then we're going to do something similar to the power rule. We're going to take the exponent, we're going to multiply it times the front of the function, we're going to reduce the power by 1, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of the inside function. All right, so let's look at our first example. f of t equals, and then we have this group of terms. And we notice that all of these terms in the parentheses are raised to a higher power. So here we're going to use the chain rule. So we're going to take the derivative, f prime of t is equal to, we're going to take the exponent, we're going to multiply it times the constant that's being multiplied out front. We're going to write down the inside function as is, but we're going to reduce the power by 1. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the derivative of what's in the parentheses. So this is what we would call the inside function. We want to multiply by the derivative of what's in that red box. So we're going to multiply by the derivative of what's in the parentheses. So that would be 3t squared and then the derivative of negative 9, of course, 0, so we won't write that. All right, so it's the power rule, but then we take what's in the parentheses and we multiply by the derivative of that. All right. Now, if I wanted to simplify this, I can take the one-term factors and multiply them together out front. So that's what I like to do. I li I'd like to write it as 36... Uh, t squared times that group t cubed minus 9 cubed. Makes it look a little bit nicer, all the, the one term factors are out front and then any groups raised to powers are in the back. Alright, we're going to do the same thing for our next example, except this time we note that we have a negative exponent. So we're going to take the derivative, notice that we have a group of terms in the parentheses and all of this is being raised to a higher power. So we're going to use the, power, the, the general power rule, the chain rule. We're going to take the exponent, we're going to multiply it times the front of the function. We're going to write the function inside as is. We're going to reduce the power by 1, which gives me negative 6. So here's kind of the new part. Remember, the new part says you're going to take what's in the parentheses and you're going to multiply by the derivative of that. So the derivative of the inside. So what's in the parentheses there, we're going to take the derivative of that. 
So that's actually 2x. All right. And once I've done that, I'm just going to put here that I'm going to just simplify this. This is my derivative. And if I left it like that, I would not receive any points off on my exam. However, it's kind of nice to simplify a little bit um, for future practice. So negative 5 times 2x, I can write that as negative 10x, and then anything that's in a group is just going to go at the back. So x squared plus 2 raised to the negative 6 power. I'm just going to leave that to the negative power, and I'm going to put that at the back. Example three, um, the first thing that we want to do is if we have any radicals, we want to rewrite the function with exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this as 10x squared plus x, all of that raised. So all of that's being, uh, it's underneath that cube root, so all of that's going to be raised to the one-third power. Now we've talked about um, doing this type of problem using the quotient rule, and if you wanted to use the quotient rule, you can. But now we're going to talk about a shortcut for that, especially if you have a constant at the top of your fraction. The chain rule is actually a lot easier to use. But remember, when we were using the power rule, we said any variables that are in the denominator, we wanted to bring them up to the top. So the same thing here. If I want to use the general power rule, or the chain rule, then I need to bring any variables up to the top. So notice that I have not taken a derivative yet. I have just rewritten the original function. Now remember, when we move things to the top, they get multiplied times what's already there. So I'm going to put parentheses, and I'm going to write my function, but it's all now raised to the negative one-third power. Since I moved it to the top, the exponent is going to change signs. So, so far, all we've done is rewrite the original function. Notice that I have not notated that I'm taking a derivative yet. Okay, now I'm going to take a derivative. So, f prime of x equals. So, I'm going to use the general power rule. So, all I have is a constant out front of the function. So, I'm going to take the uh, exponent, multiply it times that constant. That gives me a negative 2 thirds times... We're going to write the inside function, what's in the parentheses, we're going to write that as is. We're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, so remember that's negative 1 third minus 3 thirds, so we get negative 4 thirds. And then the one part that you want to be really careful about that you don't forget is we want to take the derivative of that inside function. So that would be 20x plus 1. So I always want to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And not a lot that can be done here, so I'm going to leave that derivative exactly as is. Um, not a lot can be done there. All right. Example 4 and 5 and 6. So the next few examples are going to be combining a couple of different properties, a couple of different rules. So I'm going to put a star by this one. Notice here that we do have a group of terms that's raised to a higher power. However, not everything in the function is in that parentheses being raised to that higher power of 4. We actually have something out, else out front, 2t squared. And because there's a variable there, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful. This is actually a mini function. And we have to treat it like a little mini function when we have the variable included as part of what's out front of the parentheses being multiplied. So this changes things. So this tells me I have a little mini function times another mini function. So this tells me I'm going to have to use the product rule because I'm multiplying in between these two mini functions. All right, so what does the product rule look like? So this is kind of a rehearsal or a um, kind of a recall problem, a little bit more practice from the last section using the product rule. Okay, so what is the product rule? So it says the first and the second. Okay, so you need to label those. So we're going to say, well, uh, product rule says you take the first as is, so it's the first 
little mini function as is, times the derivative of the second. Okay, so in order to take the derivative of the second, and let's just write the words out, it's the first times the derivative of the second. In order to take the derivative of the second, we're going to have to use the chain rule. Okay, so I'm going to write here, chain rule. So in order to take the derivative of what's in this purple box, all of those terms are being raised to a higher power. So this is chain rule. So I'm going to bring the 4 out to the front. So that's 4 times. You're going to write the inside function as is. Reduce the power by 1. And then once again, we're going to be careful that we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what's in the parentheses? What's the derivative of that? That's negative 4. Plus, we're supposed to write the second as is. times the derivative of the first. So we're going to multiply this by the derivative of the first. So we're going to take the derivative of what's in that green box. So 2t squared, that's 4t. Okay, and we're going to leave that just as it is if we want. We could say there's our derivative, and if you wanted to simplify a little bit, you could. Let's just go ahead and simplify. Um, you make sure that you multiply um, everything that's before the plus sign and everything that's after the plus sign before you do any adding. Okay, so these are two separate terms. If you're going to simplify, you have to simplify and multiply everything together before the plus sign, everything after, and then if you want to add anything, um, if you can add any like terms, then you do. So in this first term, we have 2t squared times 4 times negative 4. So I'm going to multiply all those one-term factors together. So 2 times 4 would be 8 times negative 4, that would be negative 32. We have a t squared, so I'm going to put the t squared there. So those are all my one-term factors multiplied together. And then we have this group, and I'm just going to leave the group as is. I'm not going to multiply that out. Now we'll bring down our plus sign, and then I'm going to simplify what comes after the plus sign. Well, I don't have a lot to simplify. It's 4t, that's the monomial or the one-term factors. I'm just going to write that out front, and then I'm going to put the groups behind that. So the groups are multiplied together behind that. So 3 minus 4t raised to the power of 4. And this is really as good as it's going to get. For our purposes, this would be um, plenty of simplification. Um, in example 5, we are going to uh, use two properties again. Um, this time we have a fraction, so we know that we're going to use the quotient rule. But we also have terms raised to a higher power. So we have a group of terms in the parentheses, and they're being raised to a higher power. So first of all, what's really the overall first rule that we want to use? Well, not everything is being raised to that higher power, so I'm not going to dive into chain rule. Um, what I have really is two little mini functions being divided. Okay, So we're going to start with the quotient rule. So to take the derivative, we want to use the quotient rule. And it says take the denominator as is. So the first thing I'm going to do is write everything that's in the red box there, um, times the derivative of the numerator. So denominator as is times the derivative of the numerator. So the numerator is what's in that green box there. So 3u squared, the derivative of that would be 6u. Minus the numerator as is, so 3u squared, times the derivative of the denominator. Now when we go to take the derivative of what's in that red box, we will have to use the chain rule since all of those terms are being raised to a higher power. So it's going to be times 3, we'll bring that power to the front, we'll write down the inside function as is, reduce the power by 1, so we get 2, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So we're going to take the derivative of what's in the parentheses and we're going to multiply that at the back. 
So that becomes 2u plus 1. Now the one thing we don't want to forget here, which is really easy to forget, is we have to divide by the denominator squared. So we have to take our denominator, whatever it is, and then we're going to raise it to the power of 2. So our denominator is u squared plus u, all of that cubed, and then it's already raised to a power, but we still have to square it, so we're going to raise that again to the power of 2. Okay, our last example of just uh, using the chain rule here. Uh, we have f of x equals x plus 3 divided by x minus 2. And then notice that all of that is being raised to a higher power. So this time, since everything in the parentheses, since everything in the function is in the parentheses being raised to this higher power, then the first thing that we're going to dive into is the chain rule. So the chain rule says, if we're going to take the derivative here, I'm going to make sure I notate that, is I'm going to take the power that's everything is being raised to, we're going to multiply that times the front of the function. We're going to write the inside function as is, but we're going to subtract 1 from that exponent, so it's going to be now squared. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So our inside function is everything in the parentheses. Now if I'm going to take the derivative of that, how do I take the derivative of a fraction? Well, in order to take the derivative of the inside function, we have to use the quotient rule. So it's going to be the denominator, which is x minus 2, make sure you put that in parentheses, times the derivative of the numerator. Okay, well that's 1, minus the numerator as is, make sure we put that in parentheses, times the derivative of the denominator, which is also 1. All of that divided by the denominator squared. Okay, I'm going to make these parentheses a little bit smaller. All right, and you can choose to leave it just like that, or we can simplify a little bit. I'm just going to work on simplifying what is in the parentheses there, the derivative of that inside function. x minus 2 times 1 is just x minus 2. Um, negative x plus 3, we have to distribute that negative into the parentheses, that's negative x minus 3 all over x minus 2 squared. And of course that makes the numerator a whole lot nicer. Let's go below. Let's just go below here. So that becomes f prime of x is equal to 3 times x plus 3 over x minus 2 squared. And then we'll multiply that by, well in the parentheses now we have something simplifying x and minus x are going to cancel out. So we're left with minus 5 over x minus 2 squared. Now there are other things that you could do at this point to simplify, but um, I'm going to stop right there. And remember that if you had stopped right here, this would be correct. Okay, so on the exam, if you stop right there, that's fine. Um, as long as I can clearly see the rule that you used. Uh, the level of simplification is up to you, so if you chose to simplify more, um, it's nice practice if later on we need to simplify to actually use the derivative, but as far as if I ask you just to take a derivative, the level of simplification that you um, get to is up to you.